All right, it's 10 o'clock, we're heading over to Aquarium. So there is some paid parking, but there's also street parking. Uh, street parking varies street by street. The closer you are, the shorter you can park. Uh, it's 90 minutes, an hour, it's all different. Um, but there's also some that's unlimited hour next to like apartment complex and things like that. Yeah, you have to go like, almost three, like three blocks, Three, four blocks away. Yeah. yeah, then you get some unlimited free parking. So the closer you are, it might be paid parking, but farther away in the, in the residential, residential area is free. So yeah, just if you don't mind you walking. Don't feel like yeah, but quite a lot of parking spot. I, I was expecting worse, but it's a long weekend too, so not bad today. Don't know why. Okay, yeah, heading over. After you pre-order ticket, you have to wait in line to get into the car. Yeah. So we made it through. Yeah, it's like. Got the map. Okay, heading in. Whoa. Where? Where is it? Can we do it? Welcome. Huh. The otter feeding. That's so cool. Piece of the action. Thank you folks in advance, especially tall friends like myself. Now friends, we have monitors about all of these exhibits. Or not, you are all here at the right place at the right time. Because some members of our animal care team are about to feed all three of our sea otters that we have here on exhibit today. Now I'd love to introduce you to Marcus Otter. Now our otters are going to be exhibiting something called stationing. So they stay in, or they start, I should say, in one spot during every training and feeding session. So that way our trainers know exactly where they're going to be. They can start in those same spots every single time. So on the right hand side, the far right, we've got Ivy. In the middle, we have Rosa. And on the left hand side, we have Selka. Now our trainers are going to be asking our otters to participate in a variety of different natural and husbandry related behaviors. They're really living at a five-star resort here at the aquarium. Don't worry, they are getting those hard shells behind the scenes where they can craft to their heart's content. But they're simply getting that yummy meat here during this session. Now I want to remind you folks that these otters aren't just here for our own entertainment. These training sessions allow our otters to star in to be the starring roles in their own healthcare and welfare. So everything we ask these otters has a purpose to help mentally and physically stimulate those natural and husbandry related behaviors. So it looks like we've got some natural behaviors at the moment. We've got otters simply stationing or maybe swimming over to a window. What we call depth out gone onto that rocker for that additional training. Looks like Selka up there, so you can enjoy that training as well. Now in terms of these otters, they need to keep up that high metabolism in the cold water. So they're eating a lot. And another reason that they, um, another way that they stay warm is that they actually groom a lot. They spend about three to five hours every day grooming their fur. Can you imagine brushing your hair for that amount of time? I think my arms would get a little bit tired. So what these otters do is they rub their paws all over their body and that traps a layer of air between their fur and their skin. Believe it or not, they have the densest fur coat in the animal kingdom at up to one million hairs per square inch. That is the size of a postage stamp. So they are definitely doing a lot of work both out there in the, both out there in the ocean and actually here in the aquarium as well. Open sea. Uh, 3D LCD LCD screen. 
fish or real fish? Pacific sardine. Pacific sardine? Now, could you come down and answer questions after the meeting too? <laughs> of course, of course. Perfect, that's good to hear. Now, I think we're all ready for some excitement downstairs. Are you ready for excitement upstairs? Maybe you want to start this off with a super secret hit signal in here? I think we're ready. And yes, folks, this is a super secret signal, so don't share this with anybody. I trust y'all. I trust y'all. Right, here we go. Well, they've got a few different attitudes. We're swimming through the water here. We're seeing them 
changing different colors of gold and blue and green. It is not just a trick of the light. They are truly changing colors. These dolphins have color changing chromatophores, some on their skin, that allow them to change into those different the brilliant hues. Now this can help them blend in. Oh, that shot's bayfish. It in fact chops sardines. <laughs> <laughs> Parents, if you haven't had the circle of lifetime, now might be the time. All these animals in this exhibit, they are showing off that true ecosystem. Everyone is a part of the food web together, and sometimes it means they just might be on the menu for their neighbors. Now, in the modern day aquarium, we do keep them all very well fed, so they are less inclined to go after their neighbors. They often have very, very full bellies, and they tend not to overeat. So, here in the modern day aquarium, we say no predation. We can never say no predation. Again, real food web, circle of life, it does exist here. Now, I know we've had a lot of action from our big fish and our dolphin fish. Do I have any shark fans out there? Here. Unlike many other stingray species, these are entirely pelagic, so they never see the sea floor. So it means they need to find their food in the middle of the water column, but their mouth is on the other side of their body, so it can be hard to track that and make sure they get their food. So what these animals do is they do those incredible acrobatics, they'll spin around, and they'll use those wide pectoral fins to help manipulate the food closer to their mouths. Again, if you look at those monitors on either side of the window, you can see we'll do a similar technique. We put a target in the bottom, oh, like a visual oh. therapy. I know these sardines are overshadowing me here, but just on those monitors, you can see we call it Samaria, flips upside down, and we give it something directly to its stomach. No, But now going back to the true action that's continuing here, our sardines are finally getting their turn. You can see that brown cloud of food hitting the surface of the water. That is the first course for our sardines, some tasty food pellets. And similar to the plate food you might offer to your home aquarium, just specially formulated for our marine fish here. And now notice how these animals get their food. They're not really finding just one piece and signaling in on it. They're just swimming through that entire cloud and they keep moving through. Now this feeding strategy works because the way they feed is by filter feeding. They, this is one of the smallest food items out there we will offer to our animals. And a good rule of thumb for all of these marine creatures is that they can get their mouth around it, they're going to try to eat it. So this is a great option for all of our filter, filter feeding animals in here, particularly the sardines. Now remember, I talked about the circle of life, right? Where these sardines can be on the menu in the wild for those other animals here. So how do they stay safe in their open ocean community? Well, staying tightly packed in that school is exactly how they're able to do so. All these dolphin fish and these tuna in here are visual predators. They need to single out one prey item and track it for their meal. But it's really difficult to do that when it's tightly packed in with 99 of your very best friends. So we might just want to give it a try right here, get a real good sense for it. Let's pretend we have the visual predators, the double fish starting group. <laughs> and we'll find one sardine and we'll follow it for five seconds. Alright, so let's grab your sardine. One, two, three, four, five. Raise your hand and show your sardine. <laughs> okay, if you are raising your hand, go ahead and look at me. And I look back. You probably lost it right now, right? This is why it is so important, kids, to stay in school. <laughs> this is how you stay safe in your open ocean community. Teamwork does make the dream work, and these sardines are able to do so excellently. In fact, some sardines who were killed in the wild can live up to 25 years. That is incredible for these tiny animals here. Staying in that school really does work. Now we talked a 